G'day, welcome back. So whilst the bodywork happens on the Morris Minor in the background here, I thought I'd get on and get cracking on the engine. Uh, partly because it's all gone in pieces in the corner of my workshop, taking up space. It's going to get lost, broken, damaged. So we'll get that all kind of squared away, get it all wrapped up nicely, store it somewhere else, then that's got to be a good thing. So uh, we'll have this as a separate set of videos. So we'll have an a Austin A-Series uh, engine rebuild kind of series just to keep it separate from the uh the rest of the car but it's all kind of linked it's all the same car uh but yeah uh, so we're going to start off with the cylinder head uh so far all i've done to the cylinder head is given it a good clean up well, i say that's all i've done well I've given it a good clean up uh, i've also kind of surfaced the the head with this whetstone oil stone whatever you call it knife sharpener thing um Saw it on Benny's Custom Works Turbo Yoda, one of those, uh, for preparing blocks. Uh, this is a nice big flat 8 inch long stone. Uh, we'll see if it's done a good enough job for the surface of the head. See if we've saved ourselves the need to get it machined. Um, so yeah, done the cleaning. Got a little bit more prep work to do. Uh, we'll it's sat there covered in oil at the moment. Uh, we'll clean that all off. Uh, we'll do some checking. Uh, so this video we're going to check the surface of the head, remove the studs that are on there and check the valves uh, for play in the guides and come up with a plan of what we're going to do next. So let's get into it. Right, so here's our head looking all oily. Uh, we've got all these studs in here which are kind of in the way. A um, couple of different ways to get studs out of a head. You can always do the old double nut trick. Don't Google that. Um, I've never had much luck with that and certainly the studs on the block were really tight so we've got a special tool. Of course it's a Tool Pro 1 stud extractor remover. Um, it's one of these deals. Get my screen so I can see what's going on. Oh, yeah. 
So one of these deals, you've got this kind of cam on here. Uh, so you stud go through one of these two holes, depending on the size. When you try and undo it with a ratchet, it locks on. This uh, nilled wheel locks on and undoes the stud. So got a few to do here. Um, works really well. Does damage the threads a little bit, so we'll be getting new studs anyway. So um, yeah, let's just hook into it. So it's half inch drive. That one's already loose. Look at that. Oh, these ones here. Thermostat housing ones. Nice and easy. The only um, problem I've found with this tool is actually uh, once you cut the stud undone, how do you actually get the tool off the uh, off the stud? It kind of tends to lock in there pretty well. But what I have been doing, I've just been tapping the um, the wee half inch drive ratchet thing out the bottom and that seems to work that works for me anyway Take a bit of force to, to get going. I'll try to get the tool off that way. Second one down. So yeah, tool works well, nice and quick. Uh, quicker than putting on two nuts, which never works for me anyway. Stand her up, do the exhaust manifold studs. So I spent about 90 minutes getting this all kind of cleaned up with a whetstone. Um, just using, getting the tool to do the work, nice gentle back and forth, 
for, uh, adjusting the angle, making sure we're trying to keep it nice and flat. Um, I could probably go a little bit further, but before I do, I might as well just make sure it's properly flat with a straight edge, uh, and then we know we're not wasting our time. Alright, so here's our straight edge, made in Japan. Uh, so it's not a metal ruler, it's a proper straight edge with a machine kind of edge. So that should be nice and flat, we'll look after this. Also got our feeler gauges, uh, set of Tool Pro feeler gauges there. <coughs> right now, so the rebuild guide I found, the one that we're going to kind of go with, uh, we're saying any more than 5 foul a gap of any more than 5 thou, or variance any more than 5 thou, uh, then you should get it machined. So we're going to get our 3 thou feeler gauge, going to get our straight edge, I'm going to see if we can get this under there, check it for flatness. So we've got a free foul on this edge, come over to this side, see if we can... Good free foul on that side, do our diagonals. I'm pretty happy with that. We can't get our free foul feeler gauge on there anywhere. I'll probably do a bit more checking off camera, but that's the general idea. If we've got a smaller one. Um, we got half that. We've got a 0 0.015. That's our thinnest one. Let's try our thinnest one, which is a uh, 0 0.038 millimeters. It's actually got a slightly munted end. I'm not sure how I manage that, but uh, Yeah, um, can't even get our 0 0.0015 or 0.038mm uh, feeler gauge in there. I'm pretty sure that's the smallest one there is. So yeah, we should be pretty good. What's that? So we're happy with the surface of our head, which is awesome. Saves us I think it's about $80 to get that planed. Um, yeah, it took me about 90 minutes. I'll probably do another half hour or so, just get it looking really nice. Uh, but machine shops a two hour round trip so it's kind of win-win really uh, by the time I've driven there and back I could have done it myself so I did uh, so the next thing we need to check is our valve guides uh, so yeah I've just polished up the valves quickly in a drill see that here um, so we'll pop them in and we need to check for kind of play run out that kind of stuff and so yeah stick them in and let's have a wiggle so can you see that so what we need to check for is side to side movement in here to look for where in the valve guides these two are pretty tight on cylinder one. There was a slight wiggle there. But yeah, they're not too bad. 
There is a measurement for that, but one, we don't have the tools to sort that, and uh, two, it's all a bit irrelevant anyway. So, you can also check, check the um, valves themselves, look for any signs that they've been wobbling in the in the bore there. Uh, this one's got a wee bit of wear on that, that side there. Uh, those two ain't, ain't too bad. Right, next two. You can feel a bit of play, but you probably can't see any play there. Maybe you can. It will get you in to see that one. Hang on. You see that? There's play there. But there is a spec for that. Um, but we'll tell you why it's irrelevant shortly. But yeah, it's good to know that we kind of found some wear in those guides. Let's have a look at the next two. Let me feel some play. More so on the um, exhaust valve there. We have a look at the shaft and see some kind of. Oh. You can see some kind of wear marks on the valve itself too. Let's look at the last two. Hang on, let's try and get it so you can actually see what's going on. There you go. Again, we've got a play in there. terrible but there is some play um, so yeah all right so there we go there's our cylinder head all looks pretty nice we've taken all the paint off it so it's ready for a respray um, our surface of the head there is pretty good it's come up well we've got less than 0 0.015 foul of an inch um, which from doing it by hand I'm pretty happy with <laughs> Uh, our valves, there's a bit of wear in some of those guides, uh, so what we're going to do, we're actually going to change out all eight guides, we're going to put in eight new valves, got new valve springs, it's going to be a really tight um, setup there, so yeah, we're going to be doing that right here in this workshop. So the valve guides are pressing kind of tight parallel inserted or whatever they are, so we can press them out, press them back in using this fancy new hydraulic press that's come from Super Cheap Auto, uh, it's a six ton press. Uh, also got the accessory kit which is kind of a must have it gives us this kind of changeable head there so we've got a variety of bits and pieces um, we should be able to get a nice get the job done well um, save machine shop costs and uh, fit our own valve guides so yeah, I'll be fitting the valve guides, but as soon as you fit new valve guides, then you've got to cut new uh, valve seats. Uh, so we're going to be doing some outwork. Um, a friend of mine at work, he's got a drag bike. He um, races a drag bike. He kind of rebuilds his uh, little crotch rocket there. Uh, he's got a set of valve cutters, so we'll um, swap out the valve guides. And we'll stick it in the cart, we'll drive over to his place, uh, we'll cut some new valve guides, uh, we might even get to look at some of his fancy toys, and um, then that's that, that's our head redone, really. Uh, we'll give it a lick of paint, do some more cleaning, do some more sanding, make it look really nice, uh, but yeah, that's pretty straightforward really, for a cylinder head, there's no kind of camshafts or anything else, it's a overhead valve engine, uh, so yeah, I'm really happy with that, how it's coming along. Um, certainly save some money on the head which is good because I think we need to spend some money on the block but we'll cover that um, in a later video uh, so that's it for today it's just a quick look at the head tell you what we're doing um, show you the progress 
And next video, we're going to be pressing out those valve guides and doing all that kind of stuff. So uh, stick around for that. It's going to be really interesting. Hopefully I don't break anything. And um, yeah, comment, like, subscribe, and we'll see you for that. Cheers.